With the new season comes fresh challenges for the Saudi-backed circuit, but Norman and company are up to the task, as the league just launched an app that has the potential to upstage the golf world. So what does Live Golf aim to achieve with its new app, and how will it edge the PGA Tour out of business? Keep an eye out for more details. When the Greg Norman-led series popped up as a rival tournament to the American Tour last summer, they were underestimated by the golf world to a certain extent. Soon, the multi-million dollar contracts came flying all over. but still, people said the money was all Norman and company had to offer. The PGA Tour immediately slapped a ban on the Rebels as a deterrent to others, while reminding them that they wouldn't be able to compete in any of the majors. That was enough to scare off some who were almost boarding SS Live. But it wasn't enough of a threat for players like Mark Leishman and British Open champion Cam Smith, whose compatriot was at the helm of affairs of the PIF-funded series. Other players followed suit, but the American-based circuit remained firm in its resolve, and it looked like the PGA Tour was winning the war. But soon, shocking news hit the golf world. Augusta National announced that eligible live golf players would be invited to the 2023 Masters. Chairman Fred Ridley stated that Augusta wouldn't be entangled in any controversy. Hence, eligible players from any tour would receive invites. And when you thought that would be all from the majors, the Open Championship followed suit. But live golf had just gotten started. In no time, the controversial circuit bagged a TV deal with CW Network, and according to Norman, it was one of the league's primary focuses. But there's one more thing the golf world and the PGA Tour never saw coming, the launching of the league's streaming app. As much as Live Golf wants its tournaments to be watched by Americans, its commissioner Greg Norman also doesn't want to leave out viewers from other parts of the world. And this saw the launch of its streaming app. The Saudi Back Series has announced the launch of its new apps, Live Golf Plus and LiveGolfPlus.com, which will stream Live Golf events globally outside the United States. Fans will now be able to enjoy live and on-demand coverage of Live Golf League's second season, which started with its first event at Mayacoba, Mexico. In a statement, Live Golf Chief Media Officer Will Steger said introducing both apps will ensure that fans worldwide will get immediate access to live and on-demand coverage of the Saudi-funded league. In keeping with the content distribution scheme of other major leagues, the Live Golf Plus streaming app allows easy access for our content from more people in more places, spanning the traditional golf consumer to the usual sports and entertainment viewer discovering golf for the very first time. Steger also expressed excitement that golf fans around the world can now watch their favorite live golfers doing what they know how to do best. The app is now available for free to download from over 180 territories on the Apple Store and Google Play. And that's not all. LiveGolfPlus.com will stream the matches and Fire TV will support the app. The organization's innovative production coverage, which Live will keep producing with its in-house team, will maintain its style and format from the 2022 Invitational season, with Troy Mullins, Dom Boulay, Sue Ann Hang, Jerry Foltz, Arlo White, and David Faraday part of the on-air team. Live's coverage includes a shotgun start, enhanced drone coverage, statistics-driven graphics, a distinctive live leaderboard, and fast-paced coverage featuring twice as many golf shots per hour as the traditional golf coverage. There have been a number of changes pre season to the league's teams and its roster, with world number 34 Thomas Peters headlining a list of six fresh acquisitions that also include Mito Pereira, New Zealander Danny Lee, Sebastian Munoz, South African PGA Tour rookie Dean Burmeister, and American Brendan Steele. Confirmation of Brendan Steele's involvement marks a significant U-turn on his part, considering how he declared he wasn't interested in joining the Rebel Series last December. As has been reported over recent days, Thomas Peters is Liv's biggest new sign joining last week's confirmations that Sebastian Munoz and Mito Pereira had moved to the controversial circuit. Peters was called up as a last-minute injury replacement for America's Hudson Swafford, but later revealed that his heart was set on a move to the Saudi League as early as last summer. And his decision to join the likes of Dustin Johnson and Cam Smith on the Rebel Tour throws his Ryder Cup future into major doubt. An upcoming UK arbitration verdict will soon determine whether the 31-year-old can still compete on the DP World Tour as a Rebel and be eligible for the Ryder Cup. There have been indications that the DP World Tour Pro was becoming dissatisfied with the PGA Tour. Just a few weeks ago, he aired his frustration on his failure to make it to the Genesis Invitational, despite his high world ranking. Thomas described the tournament as one of his favorites, but considering his move and subsequent ban from PGA Tour events, he may not be appearing in it for the foreseeable future. Sad to miss my favorite tournament of the year, because well as number 34 in 
world, I just couldn't get in. Peters tweeted on February 15th after he was overlooked for the Genesis Invitational. Peters will be on Bubba Watson's Range Goats GC, with Taylor Gooch and Harold Varner III making up the four. Steele, who joins after three wins on the PGA Tour, will play on Mickelson's All-American High Flyers GC, along with the 2021 U.S. Amateur Champion James Pyatt and Cameron Tringale, after Matthew Wolf and Bernd Weisberger made way. As for the South African rookie, Dean only earned his PGA Tour card for this season before defecting to the Rebel Circuit. Since becoming a regular on the American Tour, he has had one top 10 finish, which was the Sanderson Farms Championship last October. Dean will also play for Louis Oosthuizen's All South American Stinger GC, which also features Charles Swartzel and Brandon Grace. Lee, on the other hand, has one PGA Tour victory, which was at the 2015 Greenbrier Classic. Lee hopes to repeat that success at a live event this year. The New Zealander joins Iron Hedge GC alongside Captain Kevin Na, Scott Vincent, and Siwon Kim. So the war might be raging against the American circuit in the United States, but Norman seems more interested in carrying the world along. And if you don't think that's an innovative strategy, then we really don't know what is. According to Daily Mail, Live Golf failed to negotiate a deal with a couple of potential UK broadcast partners and was speculated to be considering offering a network the rights for free. However, the deals fell through, leaving the Live Golf Plus app and LiveGolfPlus.com website as the only place to watch the league this year from outside the United States. The same thing happened when the Saudi back series tried to close a TV deal. From the onset, CW Network wasn't in the picture as the organization was in talk with Fox Sports and a host of other brands, but somehow it never came to materialization, and instead Live Golf sealed a TV deal with the CW Network, bringing its events to the home of over 200 million homes. According to The Shark, all of these innovative moves, including its franchise model, are geared toward rescuing golf, which has been stuck in a box for 53 years. However, considering all Live Golf's wins, it's obvious they're here for the long haul. While taking a jab at the PGA Tour, Norman said Live Golf is changing the tides with its new formats, but the monopolistic people don't seem happy about it. Still, they're gaining the support of the people. The PGA Tour has always been accused of illegally maintaining its monopoly over elite golf events. You would recall that six-time major champion Phil Mickelson and ten other players on the Saudi-backed Live Golf Invitational Series filed an antitrust lawsuit to challenge their suspensions by the American-based tour. The lawsuit said that the PGA Tour threatened to place lifetime bans on golfers who participated in the Rebel Series, adding that the unprecedented suspensions were immediately placed upon them. The suit also alleged that the Jay Monahan-led tour had threatened sponsors, agents, and vendors to coerce golfers to abandon opportunities to play in Live Golf events access to their members. However, Live Golf seems to be dismantling the PGA Tour monopoly, and it's certainly ruffling some feathers. But what do you think about the tour's new app? And we'll catch you in the next one.